Hey everyone, Cynix here, and I'm finally back for part three of our Urban Waterfall Design Lab. And I got a little special treat for this part. I am joined by fellow artist Jordi Lacire. Hello. And he is another person that does wonderful YouTube videos and tutorials. And I think you guys will actually really like him because he has a very similar approach to me in that he approaches each video as a student. Yep, definitely. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I want to supplement that with saying that I cover the fundamentals and stuff as well. So it's like a more... A full package, I guess, with boring stuff as well. So sometimes you need to do that stuff and... It's pretty rare to find that on YouTube, I find. So it might be interesting for people who are looking for that kind of stuff. Definitely. And the commentary is good. So I recommend everyone check out maybe his lighting video. I would say that's a good one because uh, yeah, it covers yeah. a lot of stuff that I haven't talked about. And I thought it was really interesting. Anyway, back to the design lab. It looks like the winning thumbnail was this one by Bam Simmies Bruker. Uh, and I would say it's probably the least urban of all the thumbnail options. But nonetheless, you guys picked it. So I'm just going to, we're going to run with it. And me and Jordy both did an actual finished illustration based on this thumbnail. So it's going to be a lot of fun seeing the differences in our approaches and how we kind of tackled the different subjects at hand. So what were your initial thoughts and concerns when you saw this thumbnail? I think the main thing that I first realized was that scale was going to be the most important thing about it. And it's hard to make a rock um, or a cliff, I guess, look big enough that it could hold a, a, an entire village. And you know, That was like my main focus uh, to, to get the scale right. My main concern when I saw the thumbnail was mainly on the composition. I knew I would have to at least change it a little bit because if you look at it, it has the waterfall kind of just pouring down the left side of the page. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and the other important thing to notice is that waterfalls are generally always white because it's little uh, chaotic uh, pieces of water and they're reflecting the light from every angle. So that's why waterfalls always look white. And they don't look blue or like a greenish tone like they do in the thumbnail. So I knew that if I was to copy this composition, you know, exactly how it is, it would just basically be white on one side of the page and that would make it really um, ugly. So I think it's about time that we just hop into the video and see how our creation process went. Okay, so first off is my thumbnails. And um, you'll see that uh, automatically I put up uh, six images and I took the initial um, or the reference uh, composition, so it's a vertical uh, composition. And I basically just start sketching random stuff on these six images, you know, and see what comes up. Uh, I stick to black and white because it's much easier. You know, you don't have to worry about colors and stuff like that. It's not important at this phase. And uh, basically, this is how I approach my client work. So I kind of took this as a commission, I guess, like a fake commission. And I'm doing this how I would do actual work so it looks like with this uh first thumbnail you're pretty much capturing the same uh content that was in the the original design thumbnail except just kind of changing the angle a little bit oh yeah i play definitely with the angle so you'll see that i set down a couple of horizons and this is basically my first like it's like forcing myself to do different stuff by putting the horizon at the bottom and at the top and in the middle and stuff like that and then I just uh, map out some really basic perspective and it basically dictates how the image will look. Um, so I'm not stuck to a single idea, you know. And you can see that I'm just trying, you know, different shapes and different rocks and, and the perspective will change throughout the different uh, thumbnails quite a bit. Um, I try to keep it simple. So if you zoom in, you know, it, it looks pretty blurry on the screen on, on the video, but if you zoom in, it looks horrible. So <laughs> it's really not... Um, it's not very important um, how it looks when you zoom in. So, I mean, that's pretty cliche advice is to stay zoomed out, but that's pretty much what this is. And for the, you know, the third one that you can see right now is uh, where I tried to have multiple rocks. So instead of just the, the entire village on a single rock, I thought it might be more interesting to create depth and stuff to do multiple. 
and uh, ultimately I kind of keep the idea, but it's not the same as what you see here. So. Yeah, that's definitely a kind of a fun uh, thing to see when you're watching some thumbnail. It's basically you're starting out with like the core idea that was in the thumbnail, and then you're just slowly like diverging from that away. in slight ways. Yeah. So that's a good way to come up with ideas is just do slight variations on whatever the subject Absolutely. is. Yeah. So the one that you see now on screen is the one that I decided to do uh, the closest to the original. So you can see that it's pretty, it's pretty much uh, the same idea and composition. So I wanted to do one that was pretty, you know, close and see how it would turn out. Because it's also interesting for the person who made the uh, thumbnail to see, like, my version, I guess. But ultimately, when I do thumbnails, I mean, it's, it's so easy to do a thumbnail that I pretty much take it anywhere I want. And I do some crazy stuff and see if it's better. And most of the time, you'll discover some stuff that pretty much... Um, beats the original idea, I guess, because you're, you know, you can just paint like 10 of these without any effort. And it's going to completely change the image of your final. So I try not to hold myself in when I do these. And here we can see my thumbnailing process as I tried to think of ideas. Um, mm -hmm. Unlike Jordy, I kind of like to just go straight in with colors and painting. Yeah. Uh, once in a while, I'll do black and white. And if, I think you'll actually see that later on. Uh, but for the most part, I just kind of try to get my colors going and get as much done as fast as possible. And that's probably just, I don't know, maybe laziness or something. It works too. Um, I do it uh, sometimes, you know. It depends on the piece as well. Sometimes the colors are really important. So for my thumbnails, um, I was kind of trying to create a similar concept. I was I was staying pretty close to the original thumbnail, uh, but I wanted to have this tilt in horizon line. And you can see here, I was really playing with, I don't know, kind of like a slight fish-eyed weird lens. So you can see both the bottom of the waterfall and the top and off into the horizon. <laughs> Uh, but that was really a little too ambitious or complicated for my brain to handle. Um, I like that. it, though. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty cool. Um, that's the problem. I don't know. I don't know how to do crazy, like, lens distortion stuff on my environments. I'm sure it would require some really complicated vanishing points and lines going everywhere. But anyway, that was kind of my first idea, was to create that little city like this. And I stayed very close to the original idea you can see the the city is just kind of halfway down the the waterfall um but after that i thought i would play around a bit more um and try to not keep it quite as similar to the thumbnail source and i think one of the main problems i had in my head when i was thinking of that thumbnail source uh, just a conceptual kind of problem Basically, you have to think of all the erosion and stuff. There's a reason you don't see rocks like that jutting out from the middle of a of a waterfall, and that's because the water mm. is just gonna eat away at that rock, and it's just gonna eventually, you know, get eaten off. So that's why, I, in my head, I was like, "Oh, this is so impractical. This would never happen." Yeah, in real geographically life. speaking, it doesn't really make much sense. Yeah. Uh, so my second idea, and you can see I'm playing with these thumbnails, and I'm trying to do a lot of them, so I actually switch to black and white. And that idea was to have a bridge kind of going over the waterfall. So it's kind of a land bridge that starts on one side and goes to the other side on some mountain, maybe curves out a bit. And that way the water's not coming down exactly onto the formation, uh, but it is still kind of keeping with the idea of the village on the waterfall. Okay, so back to my, uh, my screen here. And uh, first thing I do is I pick two thumbnails that I like the most, and I just combine them, which uh, I actually do often. It's, it's like I do like six thumbnails, but ultimately either me or the client is going to say I like this and that from those different thumbnails, and I basically do a, a sort of mashup of them. So I just paste in these two thumbnails that you see, and I'm starting to fix the perspective because they don't match, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but in my head, like, it looks really messy right now, but in my head, I kind of know where I'm going. And I'm just trying to get it to that point where it's where it makes sense together, you know. So I got the original, um, so the one that was really close to the original, and I put it on the background, the, the big rock. And then I have, like, a foreground with a little more smaller, you know, houses and stuff that I'm going to do uh, just to create the depth, because it's really important in this piece to have the depth, depth, so... I'm doing the um, kind of a close foreground with like 
to show you that it's it's houses, and then one on the very, you know, one in the very back, to uh, basically show the scale and the, like that it's a village that's actually on the rock. So, I guess there I, is something I should ask you because I know a lot of the people that watch these videos get obsessed over these things. But I'll point out that you are using Photoshop, where I am using Painter, yes. and yes. maybe you can mention what kind of. Uh, standard brush you're using to do all these quick oh yeah brushes obviously um i think i'm using uh just a dry media brush that comes with photoshop it's just standard answer most people will say that's just a, a default brush which is basically the case i do use some like you can see here i use some uh, vegetation brushes and stuff that i made uh, but it's nothing special really um Mostly just default stuff. And here you can see I'm back at mine. I've just been slightly rendering out. I missed some of the recording because I paused it and then didn't turn it back on. Uh, but you can see I'm just kind of rendering things out, keeping with the, the thumbnail that I established at the end of that last little part. And I also wanted to kind of get away from just having rocks everywhere. So I'm adding a bunch of vegetation and mm -hmm. tree life and forestry to one side. Um, and I'm just kind of doing this stuff really fast. I don't know. I have my own little methods with my horrible brush that I use, uh, the thick and thin pen in Painter. And I, I have trouble, like I've said before. I don't really recommend people use it because it's not the best brush for painting or anything. Uh, but I'm just so used to it by now that I can kind of control it to where I want it. Uh, you can see here I'm... I'm focusing on creating depth by adding saturation to the places that are closer. So you can see even on the rocks, they get more saturated and they have more contrast as you come closer. And then back into the distance, like where the city is and beyond it, there's a lot less contrast and saturation. Yeah, so um, I, I uh, mentioned this before that I think it's really cool how muted your palette is. And you'll see that I have problems with that. So I pretty much go from black to white and it's like... I don't know, it's not ideal, I guess. But yeah, so uh, what you see now is uh, just I put some pictures, some reference imagery on a separate um, file there, and I'm just uh, laying over some color, basically, without any fancy um, overlay modes or something like that, just playing on top and um, trying to get the basic uh, mood, I guess, you know, the color mood and stuff like that. So is that a common technique of yours to use uh, photos for the color palette reference? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I, I Because it's like um, you can pick your own colors and stuff, but ultimately there's a certain... I mean, it's, it's kind of weird to have this uh, philosophy, but I think there's a certain specific set of colors for every environment, and it's really difficult to make them up, I guess. So a lot of times I'll, I'll refer to images. Um, like if you look at the rock, for example, the one on the right, the image of the rock, it has these really nice greens and stuff. And I don't think I would have made that up if I took uh, or if I did it myself, you know. So having that picture up is really an insane help um, because, yeah, it makes uh, I find it elevates the realism just a little bit. And, you know, um, so I'm already getting into like a little... Uh, a little bit of detail and stuff. You can see I'm zooming in on the little island thing that I have there. Yeah, this is where you a... get to have a lot of fun because it's like watching yeah. you develop the world and create like your own little storyline. Oh, like this is the little house next to the, the water wheel. Yeah, exactly. and... I mean, at this point, the image is basically done and all I have to do is fill in the, the little, you know, cool stuff. Yeah, make a story out of it, basically. So, it's yeah, it's pretty relaxing at this point. I can just take a brush um, that's really... Um, how do you say, like very um, opaque, like oil painting, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just start to, you know, mix some colors and zoom in and do some, you know, shapes and stuff. And, you know, pretty <laughs> easy at that point. So we're back on my little illustration here. And I was really unhappy with it just because I'm weird like that and I wasn't really feeling it. And so I just started to kind of go crazy and start messing with it completely. Um, which is something that's surprisingly common when I do environments and things. Um, especially once you already have the color palette established and everything, you could kind of just change everything, change everything about how it's yeah. composed. And, um, and and digital medium, it's so easy anyway, so you might as well yeah. try that stuff. So. And there's never any reason to be super attached to what you've done. I feel like that's yeah. one of the most important things about art in general, is just don't get attached to 
to what yeah, you've done. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I, I've done many paintings like, and completely just scrapped them, just in the middle of the process, you know, after like ten hours or something. <laughs> yeah. Just because I, I ultimately, I, I wake up the next day and I realize that it's really not that good, and then I just kind of, I give up and restart the painting. So it's important to have that discipline, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. And a lot, a lot of the problems I had were compositional stuff, like. And I still don't like the final result, but basically it felt like there was nothing going on, like the composition just completely trailed off to the right side. So I'm like, oh, maybe I can, I don't know, make it slightly more interesting in some way. You can see me, I'm still flipping the the last layer off and on because I actually did this whole a secondary painting on a layer above the other one. And I normally mm -hmm. just work on one layer, but you know, when I'm doing something like this, I'll just have the second layer where it's this whole other thing. And I think the idea I was going to go for with this one was instead of having the bridge that goes across the waterfall, I'm just going to have a kind of giant uh, rock formation that comes up from the lake underneath, because that would still make some sense. And I'm just going to have this city that's very, very stacked and just very vertical building. And I'm just going to have it uh, on top of the rock, and maybe they're living off the waterfall with the water wheels and things of that sort. Uh, so I took a slight pause here just to point out some compositional issues I was having. And I'm kind of tying this into the graffiti video I did last. And you can see how the tangent of the waterfall is basically lining up with my city. And also on the left side, there's really no um, kind of breaks in how that looked. And you really couldn't tell the depth of things. Uh, so to fix these two things, the first thing I wanted to do was add some more interest to that left side. Uh, so I'll just make it look like there's a cloud actually behind and lower uh, than the than those mountains in the background. So maybe those mountains are really huge. And this cloud is in the valley between these two mountains. And that's just kind those, of... I think those two clouds do uh, a ton. Yeah. Those, those two clouds are really important. Because you really couldn't tell that there was a break between these rocks at the waterfall yeah. and the background. They were just kind of blending together. Uh, so I and the, the mountain range, like the line of the mountains in the back, is really horizontal. And I think it was important to break that up a little. So it's not like this one horizontal shape at the top, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> so the next thing I want to tackle is probably these uh, rocks over here. I don't know. I was also just going around trying to fix it, trying to make it look pretty. Um, my method for doing these rocks, I don't know, it's kind of something that I've been doing for a long time, but it's basically just draw the highlight face in just a random kind of block-like shape, uh, just having the highlight face of whatever rock surface I'm doing. So, And I try to mix up the colors be between slightly warm, like those tannish, reddish tones, and then the cooler ones, and I just kind of mix them and match them. And um, It's kind of a method that I think is really fast and fun. Uh, but anyway, you can see here, I'm just going through my little city and expanding it farther to the left so it doesn't line up with the tangent of the waterfall anymore. And it kind of breaks that tangent. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm adding like little reds and stuff to my city, but the scale is still really off. And in fact, I've never super happy with this piece that I was making. Um, so I'm kind of adding stuff here and there, but the scale of, say, this the uh, little city, it's its just really hard to show that it's really tiny when you're doing stuff like this. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I start to just make really tiny uh, horizontal strokes with like a, like to make them look like they were roofs of all these little buildings. So just a lot of thin little strokes going across. And I think that helped out a little bit. Um, but yeah, I was pretty much done with all my ideas for this piece by now. I added some I foreground think, uh, elements, and that was that was about it. Yeah. I think overall, it's a really, really cool twist on the idea, and it, it reminds me of those um, those slums in Brazil. Yeah, that's, uh, that was definitely Favela? an inspiration when I was yeah. doing the actual city stuff. Was just to have those colorful roofs of like the slums you'll see in in places like Brazil. So yeah, good call on that. That was definitely an inspiration. Yeah, it's it's really a creative uh, uh, twist on it, I guess. Um, I definitely wouldn't want to live there, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks really um, dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but I guess uh, that's what you get when you want to live next to a waterfall. Live dangerously.
Uh, gotcha. So this is how I know when I'm done with an environment is when I start drawing little birds everywhere. And I don't know if it'll show up <laughs> on the video, but basically anytime you're adding little birds, that's how you know that you've, you've exhausted all your creativity and it's time to move on. Absolutely. That said, though, every single landscape piece needs a bird or two. <laughs> yeah, that creates it's a life. basically a rule. It, crea see, it creates I the life and movement. So Yes. Uh, I add uh, some birds, too, at the end. <laughs> so, <laughs> Wonderful. It's really a given. I mean, it has to happen. So, so we're back to uh, my screen here. And basically, it's just rendering um, at this Well, rendering, you know, quote, unquote, um, <laughs> painting some stuff, basically. So some water wheels and basically trying to invent some you know, how would these people live and what would they do and stuff like that. And you'll see that I'll add some details here and there to make it make a little more sense because ultimately this isn't very realistic. I mean, I wouldn't want to live there either. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yours, it, yours feels you know, slightly more peaceful. Yeah, but it looks uh, like that rock could, like, give in any time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so I'm adding some ships and little houses and everything that would fit in the uh, setting, I guess. Yeah, it's pretty easy at this point because most of the colors and the palette is already there. And all I have to do is color pick off of the existing painting. And yeah, so adding some trees with a tree brush, which I got online somewhere. Um, and then just uh, doing some Bob Ross style. Uh, <laughs> some happy little trees, yeah. happy little bushes. Exactly, yeah. Uh, there is um, one thing that I should bring up, and that is that... You like to zoom in and out a lot, and you notice this yes. when you watch the video, but you know you, you probably wouldn't notice it otherwise, but just the contrast between our two videos. I pretty much always work just at one kind of one viewpoint, and I do very little zooming in and zooming out. Um, but that's mm -hmm. just kind of a personal thing. And also the fact that I made mine a horizontal view rather than a vertical view of things. Yeah. And that that's largely just because I... You're so used to doing videos that I was just like, oh, well, it's a video. It's going to be widescreen. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. But I guess, you know, because I zoom in, it's not that bad. Yeah, exactly. Um, I will say, though, that the zooming in and the zooming out and stuff, it's probably bad form on my part because, you know, it's better to zoom out all the time and or be zoomed out all the time. And it's not really I'm not really at the point yet where I should be zooming in that far. Um, so it's something I should probably work on a little um, Although I just want to it mention does that. add a lot of fun when I see you zoom in on like the little boats in the houses. Then all of a sudden like, yeah, yeah. you get to focus on the little storylines. And I don't really True. have that in my piece. My piece, Especially for something like this out. where you, you actually have these little details. Um, but yeah, basically at this point, I mean, there's really not much to say um, about what's happening. Other than I'm just painting oh, yeah. some. There you have the birds. birds. Yeah, look at those nice birds. little birds. Those are some nice And obviously... I'm using a brush there for the birds as well. <laughs> uh, what are you doing just here to, with the water texture? Um, it's just a, a rock brush, I think. And I'm just putting it on in a different layer and twisting the perspective just to have a little bit of a... A little bit of a ripple in the water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually a nice uh, effect. I like that. It really doesn't do much, though. Ultimately, I put it like on 1%. Yeah, it was there for a little yeah. bit, and then it just faded away. Yeah. Because uh, it was a little... It looked a little fake on... Um, yeah, okay on the high res, I guess. Uh, so one uh, other thing we can mention is this kind of general uh, painting know-how stuff. And that is uh, the color of the water in the lake here. It's basically just mirroring the sky. And that's yep. kind of a, a problem that a lot of people have when they're starting out painting was, you know, oh, how do I paint, you know, water? I A lot of people just like to make it blue, like they imagine water to be. But it's really just more like a mirror reflecting the palette of the yeah. sky. And the reason water is blue is basically because of the sky. Yeah. So, so when you're doing water in your piece, it's really easy to do because all you have to do is color pick from what's above it. Absolutely. And you, you make it a little bit darker usually. Yeah. Um, because a, a reflection loses light, so the ultimate reflection is darker than what it reflects. And that's basically the two things that you need to know to paint water so although i do notice you added a little bit of greenish tint which gives it this nice kind of yep. slightly i don't know if i want to say like algae feel but it yeah. only has a little bit of did a little bit of extra life to it um, the one thing about water is that usually it has um you know like dirt and stuff and like like i said algae and stuff so it's always like the base reflection and then you kind of multiply whatever color the water would be on top of it so, so how do you feel about your overall piece in, in the end? 
Uh, I liked it. Oh, uh, to be honest, you know, I usually uh, hate my paintings, but in this case, I like the atmosphere and the mood, and it's something that I wouldn't usually paint, even though I do a lot of that landscapes and stuff. Um, I don't know. I I tend to stay away from like villages and you know, um, human built stuff. I guess if I did this, it would pretty much be the same, but without the uh, the buildings and whatnot. So I, I like the look, it's it's something that's very in my comfort zone, but I did have to do some stuff that I wouldn't paint, I guess. Uh, the main issue with it is that I used two dark values overall. Uh, I think I could have pushed the depth a lot more. But yeah, overall I kind of like it, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I thought your piece turned out really well, and mine was, I don't know, I was kind of done with it. I didn't really enjoy the ending uh, somewhat. I enjoyed different parts of it, though. I thought some of the rocks were okay, and some of the depth was okay. Uh, but just overall, it didn't have the same personality in the like city structures and everything that I felt it was kind of lacking there. You couldn't really feel a strong connection with it. It felt just very distant and uh, kind of lifeless. The birds helped, but overall, you know, <laughs> could have been better. So I think that's about it for the video, but I would like to strongly thank Jordy for coming in here and lending us a hand with this design lab. And I hope that in the future we will get to do more collaborative videos and maybe I'll appear on his channel and we'll have some fun there. Uh, but I yes. once again strongly recommend that everyone subscribes or at least, you know, check out a video on his channel because... Um, if you're complaining about me not uploading enough, maybe there's something fun to watch on his channel because uh, it's definitely good stuff. <laughs> Thank you for watching and goodbye.